It was December 2000. I had just graduated from university. I was teaching excitedly at a public school. In one of the classes, I wrote a sentence on the board while explaining conditional sentences. Yes, children, the board says, if I were very rich, I would buy my mother. Fill in the blank using your imagination. Understood, I said. It must have been understood because everyone quietly took the small papers I handed out and began to think with their eyes fixed on the ceiling. Five minutes later, I collected the papers and read them one by one. The responses included spaceship, Ferrari and yacht, making the class laugh as I read them. The last paper I read to myself, the sentence's author, was a frail, introverted child who had just joined the class that year. We have a very sensitive friend among us, I said. Sam, stand up. Can you tell your friends what you wrote? I would buy flowers, he said softly. The class chuckled lightly. I asked you to imagine being very rich and to use your creativity. I said, if Sam wrote flowers, there must be an important reason. He waited silently for a moment. Then standing up, he said quietly, I couldn't think of anything else, teacher. His face had a strange expression, halfway between a smile and tears, like the Mona Lisa. Are you joking? I said harshly. Do I have to give you grades to get you to think of something? He didn't respond. I returned the papers. The next morning, I found Sam's father waiting for me in the lobby. On the coffee table in front of him was a crumpled piece of paper I had handed out in class the day before. We sat and talked for a bit. After a brief conversation, he left. With difficulty, I walked towards the teacher's lounge. My head was spinning. A strange feeling like a sob was stuck in my throat, ready to burst. It was December 2000, and I learned that Sam, who filled the small blank with flowers, was also trying to fill the biggest void in his life with flowers. I learned that he had lost his mother in a car accident three months earlier, and that since then, he and his father visited his mother's grave every Friday without fail, planting flowers. The previous night, to avoid his father hearing, he had buried his face in his pillow and sobbed until morning. And on the coldest December morning of my life, I learned that a university diploma doesn't make someone a teacher.